This will go on my credenza. And one for Greg. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Let me see what name that they put on it. For Claire Thunder Sardina. Oh, that's wonderful. That's great. Thumbs up, definitely. Oh, that's beautiful. That's just gorgeous. Where and do you want me to sit? In the middle, probably? You can sit anywhere you want. All right. <laughs> and our moderator is Steve Procopi, also known as Capone on AntiCoolNews.com. And two of our far-flung correspondents, Omar Mozafar and Omar Moore. We have only three mics, so we'll have to share. I have to give you. Uh, oh. So I just wanted to say before before we start with the questions. Um, Greg and I go back a couple of years with this film. Um, he sent me a copy almost two years ago to the date. I looked up the review. It was from May of 2008, so I must have gotten it around April. And um, I read the email that he sent me just sort of describing the film. And he said, it's about uh, lightning and thunder. And, uh, oh, thank goodness. Um, <laughs> no pressure. So, and I didn't even read the rest of the email because I just said, I just wrote back and I said, send me that movie, because I know who those people are. And, um, and I, I wanted to surprise Claire with this, actually, um, that I was at that Pearl Jam concert in 95, <laughs> and I will never forget that moment as long as I live. I, I went out and found a bootleg of the concert, and just to have their performance, because it was so unique, and, um, and I had these great seats because I'm in the Pearl Jam fan club, so they put you right in the front. And I just, I was like, what is going on here? I didn't know who they were before that. And every once in a while, I'd see their name in the Chicago paper playing a concert in Chicago. And I always meant to go, and I never did. And I'm killing myself every day that I never went. But, oh, can you hold this for one second? I, I actually brought with me my ticket stub from the Pearl Jam concert. And, uh, and you can see. Thanks. That's the, that's the ticket, Marcus Amphitheater, July 8, 1995. I would love if you would sign this for me on the back. <laughs> if you need something. And, and I, I, I fished that out when Roger uh, asked me to come down here because I'm like, there is no way that I'm not, and I never get autographs, I don't ask for autographs ever, so. But there's no way I'm passing up this opportunity, so. Um, I guess the, the, the single most obvious question is how, Greg, how did you two, three find each other uh, however many years ago? Because I know you've been working on this movie for a very long time. Yes, it's been a very long time, uh, and not just me working on it, but I just, right off the bat, I want to let everyone know that there's some uh, uh, Jimmy Smarco and Nick Klaszewski, uh, Nick edited it and Jimmy shot a bunch of it, they're here tonight. So stand up, you guys. And... There they are. So, uh, yeah, so I, I um, so it's really a, a, a we thing, but I, I met them um, while shooting a, a Harley Davidson documentary in, Phil uh, in, um, in Milwaukee, and that was the state fairgrounds, and I heard uh, Sweet Caroline coming through the PA system somewhere on the ground. What, what year was this, do you remember? Um, no, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was the 90th anniversary, and I guess Harley's well over 100 years old It would now. have been approximately around 1996 or so. Yeah, it was, it was a long time ago. 1996. And um, so I heard, the, I, I heard it, and, and the crew, uh, we went chasing after this sound because we knew Neil was a Harley fan, and we thought, well, wow, you know, so we got, and we, are, we arrived at the venue, and it was lightning standing on top of a bar with thunder right there playing the tambourine, and... 50 grizzled bikers dancing their chaps off. And it was, it was awesome. And um, it was, uh, oh, there's all kinds of deep meaning why I was attracted to it. But in general, my parents had three eight-track tapes in the car growing up. And that was uh, Janis Joplin 
Cat Stevens and Hot August Night by Neil Diamond. So it just represented something really cool and I was like, I wanted to be part of that. So um, I saw them and was fascinated by them. We filmed them. Unfortunately, they didn't make the cut uh, for the corporate people at Harley. But um, five years later, I shot the 95th anniversary film for Harley and we looked for you guys and then we found you and you played our rap party at uh, Brett Favre Steakhouse and we were in the back room and it was 50 guys that had been, us 50, not bikers, but worse film crew guys that had been, <laughs> had been on the road for a month and we just needed some entertainment. We were all going to say goodbye to each other the next day and it was just guys. And we, we wore their vests. You played our rap party. We wore their vests. We met you. We ate with you. And it, was, it was fantastic. So um, ever since then, yeah, it's, it's, so that's where the relationship started. And uh, I've always wanted to tell their story or to help you guys out, you know, in hopes that people, you and other people would see. Uh, when he first came in, it wasn't as well accepted um, as, as I, uh, I imagine he came into the household and I was very paranoid about how my household looked at the time. And, um, and, you know, I'm like, what is this and what's going on? And uh, who are you? And, and it developed into um, not just a friendship, but some of the closest times he was with us. Um, and, you know, like a brother, like a brother to me, definitely. In fairness, lightning set me up, though, because he, he welcomed me to come to Milwaukee, but you didn't know that. No, so then right. I was in that house and I met Lightning and he was in his red, white, and blue boxers and invited me in and I said, where's Thunder? Well, she's not here. She, you were working out, I think. And, and, uh, and then you pulled up but, and then he said, oh, well, by the way, she doesn't know you're here. And so then, <laughs> and so then I, I shot to the Piggly Wiggly and got some flowers and, and then just, I don't think I even really shot right away that visit. It was just more to... Speaking of working out, I just wanted to make a comment real quick. In the, um, in, the, in the screener book, it says that I'm a little bit plumpish. And I'd like to say to Roger, I've lost, 20, I've lost 38 pounds. <laughs> he may have noticed. He may have noticed. There have been a really a lot of talented people that I'm able, I've been able to meet at some of the lunches and dinners here. But when I saw Claire uh, when we were having lunch the, a couple of days ago, I, I froze. Like, I couldn't believe that this person I've been watching in this movie, and I've seen this movie about six or seven times, shown it to friends of mine that live in Milwaukee. They're just like, I know that club. I know that street. I know exactly where they live. I remember these guys. All my Milwaukee friends are huge fans of the film and of you. Um, but just opening, I mean, opening your, once you did find out that Greg was going to be staying with you for a while, um, how, I mean, did you have any hesitation just beyond the way your house looked that, to have someone kind of just watch your family in this much detail and, 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 and then had to have access to those home movies too? Well, which... everything, you know, was a combination of so many different um, venues as far as and I have to give credit to Nick, the editor, who had thousands and thousands of hours of material to go through. Um, and it, it wasn't only about the home situation, it was about so much more. So the home was just a part of it. But uh, it was, after a while, they became the fly on the wall, so it says. And, um, and you know, it became very natural. It became very natural, and um, we 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 wanted it to work for everybody concerned. So 